franktalks.com This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. Relationship coach Frank Kermit is a best-selling author, educator, and relationship columnist. He also presents sex talks at such events as the upcoming Everything to Do with Sex show at Place Bonaventure later this month in Montreal, and also the Salon de Marier at the Palais de Congrès in February. Frank is here now to talk about relationships, and he joins us on the line via Skype to Skype Communications. Hi, Frank. Hello, Peter. How are you? Uh, just tickety-boo. Nice to have you on the program with us. Now, you talk about various things when you do these discussions, um, and including something called couples in transition. What exactly does that mean? Couples in transition refers to when a couple is making a significant change to their status. Now, this can include a number of things. It can include things like the empty nest syndrome, where the children are grown and the couple, once again, is alone. This can include a different stage where some of their children are old enough to be going to school. They no longer have an infant in diapers, and they're reconnecting again as man and wife when, for a long time, they were mom and dad. This can also include when one person in the couple is interested in going back for an education and changing a career path. That's also a form of transition. It also includes when couples decide that they want to augment their sex life and make a change to their status related to monogamy or non-monogamy. Okay. Now, um, some of the things, and you also do uh, discussions, for instance, at the uh, Salon de Marier that's coming up in February, I understand you'd be talking uh, or giving pre-marriage talks. And there are certain questions, which I find rather interesting, certain questions to ask your fiancé before you get married. Now, I think a lot of those questions would be obvious to some folks, but some of them perhaps not so obvious. Exactly. When I'm at the Salon de la Marie and people come up to my booth, I'll be asking them questions like, have you talked to your fiancé about who should and should not be invited to the wedding? For example, does your fiancé know everybody who's coming to the wedding that has already seen you naked? (laughs) I know this sounds like a very silly question, but I have been to weddings where this has happened and I have counseled couples where this has happened where somebody came to the wedding that was actually an ex-lover, usually a secret ex-lover of either the bride or the groom. And when does this come out? It comes out at the reception. And it spoils the entire experience for one or both of that couple. Well, this this goes back to one of my earlier questions, and that is, is everything or should everything be on the table? Should someone who is getting married explicitly give details to their previous love life, for instance. Absolutely. In my opinion, we live in a digital age now. Everybody's past can be put out there for everyone else to see. And at the very least, if you're going to marry somebody, they should have the ability to handle whatever information comes their way. And I can tell you this as a coach and, and as someone who works with these couples. It's not the information itself. It's the fact that it was kept from them Now the big question is, well, what else are you hiding from me? What else am I going to be embarrassed about or surprised about? When the person knows about their partner's past and that past comes to light, well, I already knew about it and I chose to accept it then. I can deal with it now. Okay, so we're we're talking about supposedly normal, rational people here, uh, adults uh, communicating about their past relationships. But what about someone who... It's it's not the, the keeping of the secret. It's the information that they can't get past. What happens in a relationship there? Look, if you cannot accept your partner completely and totally, it's better not to get married. And the, here is where we have the dilemma. People are afraid to communicate because of that fear of conflict. They're petrified that they're going to be abandoned. And this is very understandable. You want to spend the rest of your life with somebody. You've met somebody. You're in love. You you see a future with them, but now you're worried. But if I tell my partner the truth, they may leave. Well, that's why you need to tell them the truth. That's why you need to sit down and say, here are all the reasons why you should not marry me. And if they stick around after that, okay, you, you are building a foundation that nobody else can put cracks in. But if you start with secrets... All you're doing is creating a foundation that other people have the power to jab 
and crack. We live, particularly here in Canada, in a very uh, multicultural society. So many people, so many different groups make up the melting pot that is the Canadian uh, panorama. And I, I think some people would be very surprised to know that within certain groups in this country, uh, there are still a lot of arranged marriages where in some cases the bride doesn't know the groom before they get married when their family puts them together. I, I just wanted to bring that one up because we talk nowadays more and more about communication, 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 yet there are still lots of people who are getting married who, who don't really know each other. I got to tell you that the divorce rate for arranged marriages is still about the same as the divorce rate for people who go into the marriage having been in a relationship for some time. You have to remember, being in a long-term relationship requires a certain set of skills. These are communication skills and managing expectations. You have to have realistic expectations as to what a long-term relationship can offer. If you go into a relationship with misguided expectations, you're going to be unhappy. You're going to be miserable. And if you go into a long-term relationship with horrible relationship skills, being unable to manage intense emotion, for example, um, having any sort of insecurities that are taking to an extreme level where you are now just so flustered and you, you're starting to play out things in your own brain that will never actually happen in reality, these are the things that can detract from a relationship. So bear in mind that a pre, there's nothing wrong with a prearranged marriage as long as both parties are consenting. What we're looking at, do we have compatible values? Do we have realistic expectations? And sometimes a prearranged marriage usually is based on cultural backgrounds, religious backgrounds. There are social norms in place which answer those questions. You know what to expect because you're being set up into a situation where both of you have pre-designated gender roles. Now, what happens in a society that has removed the social norms and told people, you can have any relationship you want, you can structure any relationship you want, without some basic skills as to how to manage intense emotions and how to keep your expectations realistic, that's just a formula for failure. Now, as far as the expectations of uh, parties coming into a relationship, does it differ if, say, one of the two members of the new relationship was previously married, or if both of the people in a relationship were previously married? Usually, if you have a failed marriage in the past, the big question to ask is, what did you learn about yourself? If the person says, well, I learned that I married the wrong person, that doesn't really tell me that they've really figured out who they are and can they communicate those things about themselves that maybe would turn off a potential partner. Usually, People will say that in their first marriage failing, oh, it, they'll blame the other person. It's when their second marriage fails that they say, well, maybe there's a problem with me. And by the time they get to the third relationship and they start noticing the same problems, that's usually when people get up and say, okay, now I'm going to seek out the help of a professional. I can't keep doing this. But by that point, you've got a couple of failed marriages in your background. I like helping people before they get married and start asking them really hard questions that they maybe have never thought about. Now, uh, going back to one of the shows you're going to be doing, the one at Place Bonaventure, the Everything to Do with Sex show, uh, is it a situation when you do these type of uh, programs uh, that people are initially, initially skittish to, to open up and discuss sex? Yes, sometimes that is the case. Usually, the it's not the topic of sex, but whether or not the person coming to me feels a sense of trust. And because I work primarily as a coach and a natural therapist, I can share personal stories from my background. And through that, I gain a rapport with the client. That's when they feel they can trust me because they are more comfortable opening up to me since I'm just as open with them. And that's I, the key. And I guess also there's 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 the skittishness that some people have because they wonder if whatever they do and or think when it comes to sex, if it's supposedly and I'm doing air quotes here in the realm of normal as opposed to the general population. 
everybody is afraid of being stigmatized. And in some cases, some people are afraid to talk to their partners about what they might like to try. They're worried about their partner judging them. They're worried about their partner leaving them. That's understandable. There's a lot on the line here if you haven't talked about these things beforehand and now you've got a marriage, possibly some children on the line. You have a mortgage together. You're building a future together. But there's that one thing that's been on your mind that that curiosity is starting to get to you and you aren't really sure if you could be completely honest with your partner. And I got to tell you, in almost every case that I've ever dealt with, it hasn't been the request itself that has really caused the problem. It has been the way it was presented. Because once it's presented in a way that makes your partner feel reassured that this is not to replace your partner, but something to enjoy with your partner, then you can open up the dialogue. But so many people are afraid to take that step. Interesting topic indeed. People can find out more information by going to um, your website, which is uh, well-named Frank Talks, correct? That's correct, franktalks.com. Franktalks.com, and I'm, I'm sure you'll find, people will find their information about uh, the places that you're going to be appearing, such as at uh, the uh, Salon de la Marie in February, and also uh, the other event, the Everything to Do with Sex show coming up at Place Bonaventure in, uh, later this month. That's right. In Montreal, it's called the Salon de l'Amour et Seduction. That's happening at Place Bonaventure. The Salon de la Marie, which is done by Sheldon Kagan, the big bridal show that's uh, now in its 30-some-odd year of production. Um, that's happening at Palais de Congrès. It's going to be great. I'm so thrilled to be, have a chance to participate and help people with their problems. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you, Peter. This has been outstanding. You are my first interview of the new year. It's always good to be somebody's first. Relationship coach, Frank Kermit. You can check out his website at franktalks.com to find out more about his upcoming events. And you can go to my website at thestufffile.com to the What's On page for this show, which is show number 0178, and you'll find the link to his site. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications. Need help with love, sex, dating, or relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationships? Visit FrankTalks.com If you need help with your relationship Ships. My buddy Frank, he's got some tips. Just go to franktalks.com. His advice is better than your mom's. He knows what you're going through. Cause Frank has been there too. FrankTalks.com What do you do when you feel like a fool When your heart has been broken again Pick up the phone or get onto Skype and talk on a private session Yeah, yeah.
do you do when your love goes away? Try coaching one on one. How do I sign up to turn things around? Just sign up at franktalks.com. Yeah, get back with help from Frank Talks. Mm, I get back with help from Rate going around. certain just read the reviews Frank loves his stuff and Frank several goods good love can soon come to you